Hey, what's up, Zach here. And today I have all the pros and cons of the all new Nike Alpha Fly Next Percent 2. Here we go. Now the original Alpha Flies were a real quantum leap in shoe tech, even from the Vaporfly line from Nike, which was also a real step up. So in the second iteration, you know, have they really done anything to make the shoe better? And is the shoe really for everybody? And that question kind of starts in the uppers. And I'd argue that the uppers of the Alpha Fly are almost as distinctive as its midsole. And on the next percent too, it is that atom knit material, which is a multi-directional, multi-material type mesh knit, which is just so ultra light. I mean, you can kind of see through it just with the naked eye. If you look at it on the microscope, it appears almost to be a random meshing of materials. However, once you kind of zoom out on it, you can see it is a very distinctive pattern that goes all the way through the uppers that keeps them really breathable, really light, but also just ridiculously strong. But that also comes with a sacrifice of flexibility. Because unlike the uppers of the Vapor Fly, which do actually have some give to them, it is a three-piece tongue, the entry is pretty easy and they do accommodate a lot of foot types, whereas the Atom Knit on the Vaporfly Next Percent 2, the bunting in them, number one, is yarn. So that is a little bit of a lighter material, but also that Atom Knit, because it's a slipper tongue too, is a really difficult entry for any high volume foot types. Whether it be a wider rear foot and ankle or a wider forefoot, these things just have a really hard time accommodating feet, especially when getting into them. Now that does make them a more glove-like fit around your ankle, but I did find that on the ankle collar here, even after the fifth or sixth run, these shoes were still irritating the back of my ankle, my Achilles tendon was still rubbing and the sides of my Achilles were still rubbing. I really found that you have to have a pretty padded sock to wear these. I'll leave some in the description below that I found were really comfortable in these, but don't try to put a real minimalist sock on these shoes unless you've broken them in after miles and weeks and weeks. But on the flip side to that less forgiving material, if you look at the upper durability test, the Dremel 10 seconds high grit sandpaper, I mean the Dremel barely makes an impression on the Atom Knit. So even though these aren't the most flexible uppers, they are still really strong, number one, to containment of your foot some more blunt trauma. Number two, they're going to be a little bit better against abrasion. And because the DuraGuard, the plastic DuraGuard is actually on the underneath side, so your toes actually don't rub that little more harsh Atom Knit material, they are going to stay very light and breathable, but also comfortable for your toes. So there is really a little bit of give and take here to the uppers. It's not all good and not all bad. The one thing I will caution you on is because the lace line is outrigger and it is very tight against the shoe, uh, you actually are going to probably need to use those thinner lace laces, those rib laces that Nike provide you. If you try to put a thicker bubble lace on there, you may actually get some wear here between the plastic layer and this little bit of wax coating outrigger here. So just watch out. If you're going to buy extra laces, probably going to have to go with something thin or just get a replacement Nike lace because you could start popping laces or popping the outriggers if you use something too strong and bulky. Now moving on to the midsole teardown. This is probably what everybody wants to see with these. These do retain the same stack, just barely legal stack on them. However, they are a little bit steeper on the heel to toe drop. However, you really don't feel that much because of the air zoom pods in the forefoot and then the PebEx foam or ZoomX foam kind of encasing them all around them. But what I think is the coolest part of the setup here in the midsole is that you're getting that same four centimeter stack from the heel all the way to the arch for a, just a ton of impact protection for your heel as well as going into these arch muscles. And you, you kind of need that because that carbon fiber or fly plate is going all the way from heel all the way here to toe. So you, you do need a pretty big stack of foam so you don't feel that underfoot and so you don't start to get really bad shock inducing injuries. Now that fly plate is incredibly flexible in the Alpha Flies, however, it still does give a ton of reverb. But the interesting thing is, is because you have this PebEx foam or TPU foam, which is what ZoomX is made of, it's more of a plastic substitute, but it also has a little bit better elasticity, is that you've got the ZoomX foam on top of it and then you've got the Zoom Air pod underneath of there. So you're getting a lot of forgiveness in your foot but you're also getting all that snapback and reverb. If you look at the jump height test, same as the Vaporfly Next Percent 2, 41 centimeters on these, and you really don't feel the reverb in these because the Zoom AirPods, especially if you're coming down midfoot or forefoot strike, you don't really feel that snap. It just feels very forgiving and very plush, but the shoe is doing a lot of work kind of almost behind the scenes for you, and you just kind of see when you really put them to work, 
they do spring to life pretty good. And moving on to the outsole tread, this is actually my favorite part of the Alpha Flies because they've made the tread base a little bit wider, a little bit longer set, so they're a little more forgiving for more striking types, which we'll talk about in a minute. However, with the tread here, you get a really long landing pad here all the way from the heel into the midfoot, and this is pretty strong rubber here in the rear foot, coming in at a durometer or test of hardness and an 11.3, which is pretty medium to hard rubber compound. Now, when you move on here into the forefoot, you get into the black black rubber here, which is kind of that same rolled block pattern as the vapor flies, but just a little bit smaller, a little bit more narrow pattern. So they'll grip surfaces a lot better. So if you're going on something a little more uneven or even a little bit of a slicker, wetter surface, these will bite a little bit better than their counterparts in the vapor fly line. And its durometer up here comes in at a 10.3, which is not as hard as the rear foot, obviously. However, it is better than some of its more direct competitors in the Nike family. And that durometer did get backed up on the outsole durability test. The Dremel 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper. Really not even a millimeter of damage on the rear foot rubber and about a millimeter of damage on the forefoot rubber. The problem is, is the tread depth on these is barely two millimeters in some spots and usually around one millimeter in most because it's that rolled rubber. So I would say if you are gonna be taking these on more abrading surfaces, the durometer is a little higher. Yes, they are a little bit harder. However, if you do any type of shuffling with your gait or you're not a real smooth and efficient striker, these may start to wear down and different spots, especially if you are an only four foot striker. And because the treads on these little bit wider set, a little more rugged, they will do better on a larger variety of surfaces. So obviously they're gonna do great on concrete or asphalt, but they also can do okay on a track type surface or shale. Just remember the softer the surface, the less ground reactive force you can get into this shoe and the less performance you can extract from it. So they are gonna do better on a harder surface. And remember, these are not meant to take turns very well. These don't cut especially well of obviously they're much better on straights or very long broad turns on a marathon type circuit not so much on a track type circuit and talking about the fit of the alpha flies they're not as forgiving as they would appear with the real light uppers you know honestly for any bit of a wider foot these are going to be a really tough break in i had cramping in these in my normal size even after a few weeks on foot so if you are anything about a 2e or above because you really don't want to be going up too many sizes in these because they are meant for more of a one-to-one -one fit I probably would just look somewhere else or just get ready for an extended break-in. However, a medium or a narrow foot can just go true to size and they will fit pretty well. You know, they're not the best for ankle sprainers. The Adam Knit, yeah, is really solid. However, because it is a slipper tongue and you are sitting pretty high up off the ground, uh, they are just not going to contain your foot if you start coming down really laterally on your strikes and you just don't have that stability. So if you are someone with chronic instability, you might wanna look somewhere else. Now I've gotta say, in terms of foot ailments, these things have got to be the shoe of the year for plantar ball of foot pain specifically. Something like metatarsal stress fractures, capsulitis, bursitis, plantar plate tears, anything on the bottom of your foot. Because the two independent units of zoom air on the bottom plus that fly plate, they are just so forgiving underfoot. And if you're someone that has more chronic shin splints looking for something that's just going to stop a little bit of that shock going up that tibial crest, these things are just phenomenal for that. They're not without their drawbacks in other areas, but if that's the only thing you're looking for, they are definitely the best out there so far. And you know, in terms of runability, you know, these do have a little bit of a different experience than some other super shoes. These are really meant to go the distance with you. They're not going to feel as fluid as something like the Vaporfly or even the Adidas Adios. They're, they're just not that type of shoe. They definitely take a little bit to get used to. There definitely is a learning curve on these. And what I like about these is because they're a little bit more of a wide set base, heel strikers that are going long distances are really gonna find a friend in these shoes just because yeah they do taper and they do kind of have that more aerodynamic backswing when you're in your swing phase of gait so they are going to cut through the air better however because they're a little bit more wide set you're going to just get a more consistent strike with these so a heel striker midfoot striker and even a forefoot striker is going to do really well in these and the reason these do so well over extended mileage for a rear foot midfoot or forefoot striker is because number one that rolling action you get from a heel strike or even a more posterior type midfoot strike you're going to get that nice even roll into your forefoot and into mid stance over strike and after strike. And so it is kind of giving you just a little bit more of a wide set easier type rolling action into mid stance, which does kind of lower the energy needed to get to the next step. And in terms of a four foot striker, like I said, because those zoom AirPods 
are independent and it has its own landing pad here in the forefoot with Zoom X foam around it. It's just so forgiving to every single muscle and bone in your forefoot that it's kind of hard not to get a little bit more of an energy type advantage over time in the Alpha Flies versus even something like the Vapor Flies. And remember, the Alpha Flies just aren't meant for short haul flights. Think of these as kind of like an Airbus A380 versus one of those smaller regional jets. These just don't do well when the distances are short. They do better the longer the distance you can put into them because that's when they're going to start to extract the most energy from the ground. And that's when your body is going to be able to use the most of the tooling in the shoe because it's after those really long distances that the reverb and the carbon fiber plate, the forgiveness and the Zoom Air and the Pebex all together are going to start keeping your foot fresh versus some other people at those higher mile points are going to start to feel the shock through their legs. So remember, if you can give these enough miles, it'll give you more in return. If you're giving these shorter miles, you're probably going to be wondering why you spend so much money on these shoes. But of course, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. Are you going with these for your next super shoe? Or are you going with something else like the Vaporfly Next Percent 2 or even just a different brand? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you want to see the younger sibling to the Alpha Fly Next Percent 2, the Vaporfly Next Percent 2, make sure you click into this video up above and subscribe down below. Respect your rubber and foam. I'll see you in the next video.